The developing story tonight involves a makeshift bomb that went off at an Arizona power plant. And this one has the ATF and the FBI involved. The explosion happened at a plant in Nogales, and it could have compromised the entire city. Gia Vang is live near the border tonight. Gia? Linsu, uh, Nogales police say 30,000 plus people in the city, in the county, could have been impacted by this. But what we're learning right now, they're not yet calling what happened here right behind us an act of terrorism. They are just saying that this is a very serious threat. Now, we're being told an explosive device was detonated inside the power plant, rupturing a large fuel tank at the Unisource Energy Services Valencia plant. Nogales police say they were first to get a 911 call around 9.30 this morning. The Ford dealership next door as well as the plant itself was evacuated. Bomb squad came in to do a sweep of the building. Several agencies working this, like you mentioned, the FBI, the ATF, the Department of Public Services, or DPS, and Nogales Police. But at this point, authorities say they don't know when this was planted and there are no suspects in custody. We expect to learn much more about this story in the coming days. Live in Nogales, GFA 12 News. In the best of the rest of the news, the Indian Point nuclear power plant sits 30 miles outside of New York City. For the most part, that plant has had a safe and reliable track record, but now there's news that two of the monitoring wells at the plant have detected high levels of tritium, a highly radioactive isotope that should not be outside the plant. While the levels of tritium detected don't currently represent an immediate health or safety risk, they raise serious questions about the continued safe operation of the Indian Point plant and about the safety of New Yorkers living around it. In the wake of the new Indian Point concerns comes a documentary film by Andrea Garbarini and Susan Rubin, two New Yorkers who live in Westchester County, close to the Indian Point plant. The plan looks at the, the plan, question mark, that's the, the title of the film, looks at the questions, the evacuation plan for those living within the 10 mile evacuation zone of the Indian Point plant. Take a look. Indian Point is an aging nuclear power plant located 35 miles north of New York City. 300,000 people live within the evacuation zone and 17 million people live within 50 miles of the plant. I'm really curious about people's plans for what they're going to do if something happens. So what's your plan if something happens at Indian Point? That is a good question. Um, we don't really have a plan. And do you know about the evacuation plan? Vaguely. I never actually heard of it before. So. Joining me now to talk more about this new movie called The Plan are its filmmakers, Susan Rubin and Andrea Garbarini. Am I saying that right, Andrea? Yes, you got it right. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, and thank you both for joining us. Um, uh, Andrea, what inspired you to make this film? Well, my friend Susan, who's sitting right next to me, um, told me about the, uh, these blue bus stops um, that are surrounding our area that are in um, a lot of the towns that are in the 10-mile radius of Indian Point. And they're basically evacuation bus stops. And you're supposed to show up at the bus stop if something should happen, if you don't have a car available, and Liberty Lines is going to show up and take you away and it didn't seem very realistic. We thought it was kind of funny, so we decided to make a short film, but what we ended up making a movie about was not so much the bus stops as much as the plan itself, which is really very absurd. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm not generally superstitious, although when Mercury goes retrograde, I get a little weary, but, or wary, excuse me. But um, I remember, Louise and I, my wife and I, going to see uh, the China Syndrome, you know, the movie with Jane Fonda, mm -hmm. and then the next day, as I recall, or maybe it was just a few days later, virtually the scenario in that film happened at Three Mile Island. And, yes. you know, the whole country was going, what? <laughs> you know, because we'd all seen the movie yeah. and then it happened. Are you guys worried about what might happen now that this movie is out? No, but what we're really trying to do is get people inside the 10-mile zone and the other 20 million people in the 50-mile zone to just start to really look at this plan because I think once you start to look at the plan, you realize that the emperor has no clothes. This so, isn't a plan. So what is the plan? Uh, uh, the, either. Well, the plan, I think, should be to demand a live drill 
and um, to insist that we, we don't give this nuke plant another license to operate for another 20 years. And okay. I think there's plenty of reasons well, what to is, do that. What, I mean, Andrea, Andrea, what is the actual plan? The actual plan is that if something should happen, you're supposed to be instructed to either stay in your home or immediately evacuate. <laughs> and there's no way, I mean, we interviewed Ralph Nader in the film, and Ralph Nader brought up a good point. Only 20% of cars on the road during rush hour are the actual number of what, you know, is trying to get from point A to point B. Could you imagine if something should happen, and if it was only 20% during rush hour, if everybody got in their car and tried to leave? And the evacuation plan actually sends you south. south. It to New York south. City, and we're that, supposed to drive south. Yeah, we're just right into Russia. We know that right into traffic. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, the, the the accident won't happen during rush hour, right? right? I mean, it just can't. Oh or yeah, during it's already a been decided. Snowstorm. Yeah. Snowstorm. It won't happen. Right. I mean, it's just not realistic, and we are just saying we demand. We want to demand a plan that is actually something that would work, and there really isn't one. So we don't think that the plan should really be, you know. In existence. So, so Susan, whose whose decision is this to make? Is it the governor? Is it the legislature? Is it the NRC? I mean, uh, who? All, if ultimately you're trying to lobby somebody here, other than waking the public the hell up, uh, who is it that you would be lobbying? Okay, so it would start locally in our in our communities, and then from there it would go to the counties, namely Westchester County. From there it goes to New York State. From there it goes to FEMA. Okay, and then, then the NRC gets involved, but really the NRC isn't directly involved. It's more of a county, state, and FEMA issue. And I really do believe that if we got mobilized, we could stop this. So if, I mean, this, if, if a new plan would start at a local level, are, have the two of you started putting together an organization, or is anybody putting together an organization to create that local plan that can then you know, go to the various town councils and on the way up through that chain of command that you just talked about there? Uh, I believe it was Susan or Andrew. Well, we, Either well we, um, you know, we spoke with Ralph Nader, and he gave us some really good ideas on basically just rallying the troops and really trying to get in a grassroots level, you know, people aware and involved and really having them talk to their, you know, emergency service people in the area and ask, demand a plan, you know, and a grassroots level, we can start saying, hey, you know, is there a plan in place that would get us out of here safe? Right. And I think that's one way of starting. And what else do you think, Susan? Well, I think what we want to do now is we're kind of trying to collaborate to really put together just a one-page um, list of questions that any citizen can ask of their town supervisor, of their local police and fire, and work it up the up the ranks that way. Right. Um, but you know, we've been so busy just getting this <coughs> film out there. Yeah. Um, well, you've so done a, you've now done that a great job of it. You've, yeah, thank we're out of you. time, Susan and Andrea. Thank you so okay. much for being with us. To believe, but in January of 1961, the United States almost nuked itself. That's actually true. According to a recently declassified report published by the National Security Archive, the U.S. Air Force had an incident in which the two atomic bombs were released after a B 52 plane carrying them went into a tailspin during a routine test flight. One of the two bombs on board was actually in an armed setting by the time it hit the ground near Goldsboro, North Carolina. And it should have detonated, but it was spared because of one low-voltage switch that failed to activate properly. This near-nuclear explosion first surfaced back in September of 2013 when investigative journalist Eric Schlosser obtained government documents that were later published in his book called Command and Control. To discuss this incident further, I was joined earlier by RT producer Tyrell Ventura. He first explained what could have happened if the bomb actually detonated. The fallout alone would have hit Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and all the way up to New York City. We're talking millions of lives have been put at risk. Uh, you're also talking about a four megaton bomb, which is equivalent to about four million tons of TNT. 
four million tons of TNT. That's 260 times more powerful than the bomb that was dropped in Hiroshima. It's an incredible amount of damage and destruction could have happened uh, because of this incident. It's incredible that it's just incident. by happenstance that this didn't happen. It's in, yeah, just a technical failure, basically. Right. It should have gone off. Right, just <laughs> luck. Um, Eric Schlosser, the investigative journalist who researched this quite heavily for his book, um, found that there are at least 700 noteworthy incidents involving nuclear weapons that took place between 1958 and 1968, just a 10-year period, and the public doesn't know about any of these. Uh, should it come as a shock, the rate at which these are happening? I mean, I think it should come as a shock to any U.S. citizen, uh, just how, I mean, this makes it seem how inept we are in dealing with nuclear, nuclear weapons, and, and we need to hold our government accountable. These are the most powerful weapons on Earth, and to have 700 incidences, uh, you know, over the course of these years. I can understand back in the Cold War the secrecy involved. Right. You know, we're competing with the Russians at the time. We don't want them to think we're inept. We also don't want to panic citizens, mm -hmm. you know, by how kind of how many mistakes we're making uh, with these weapons, but we need to have accountability with this uh, across the board because it's still happening today. Absolutely, and to talk about what's happening today, outside of the mishap of detonating nuclear bombs, there's been a host of other issues at different nuclear missile bases. Can you talk about some of you know the most well, recent examples of security breaches? Well, I mean, just last year, uh, security forces at a U.S. Uh, nuclear base in Montana failed to recapture a stolen nuclear weapon it's a drill that they would run in terms of like okay you know we're running this drill about what would happen if someone stole it they failed to recapture it in the drill you know uh, the Air Force called it a critical deficiency which is probably the biggest understatement of the year <laughs> uh, the Pentagon also removed a commander in charge of 450 Minutemen missiles after the Pentagon concluded that he drank too much and was uh, on a trip to uh, Russia was cavorting with suspect women uh, you know the Air Force also then fired nine commander commanders for a cheating scandal in, that involved the emergency war uh, codes and these proficiency tests for the emergency war uh, orders. So, you know, they're basically handing out answers so they could continue to pass each test without actually really testing them. And are they ill-trained? We don't, we don't know well, what's the, going on. What's happening is, is that uh, in the Air Force right now, there's a lot of low morale because of the focus on terrorism. Yeah. You know, they, they know that there's no room for advancement. There's just, it's low morale. They don't really, you know, a lot of these soldiers out there, a lot of these, uh, you know, Air Force cadets, you know, the folks are just, you know, they, they are just kind of feeling lost in their job, so they're getting lax in their duty. It just so happens they're getting lax in their duty with nu nuclear weapons. And that was RT producer Tyrell Ventura.